Welcome to Experiments in Digital Storytelling with La Mama and Culture Hub. Good afternoon. Uh, this is Maddie. I'm here in Brooklyn. And today we are bringing you um, a program that is working with emerging technologies to explore what we can do with emerging technologies to create dynamic and meaningful storytelling experiences using the internet. Um, this was supposed to be an in-person series uh, based in the downstairs at La Mama, but uh, of course that is not possible. Um, so we've brought the entire program online. And today we're doing multiple technical feats in that we are, are exploring this new world of VR theater with Double Eye Studios. And we're doing that while all being remotely distributed uh, across various states and boroughs. Um, so today, there are a lot of different levels of experimentation happening. We're working today supporting Double Eye Studios, um, which is a group that's exploring VR theater, which is really actors working in a virtual world that's been designed um, and working with writers who are who are writing specifically for this this virtual context. Um, so our goal is really to create a space for this type of experimentation, and there's really not much precedent here. There aren't there aren't plenty of people who have who have decided, okay, great, I want to make a play in VR. So Kira Benzing, who's the director, and her whole team at Double Eye are really building pipelines um, and really forging out into the unknown to say both technically what is possible, how can we do this, both in real spaces and distributed, and artistically um, through the acting, the directing, and the writing. So they, they have to make a lot of different choices, and today you're going to see some of those choices happen live. Um, and some things that they're trying today, they might not have ever tried before. Um, so it's exciting. Um, and there might be differences between the two shows because this we've got a show at 1 p.m. which you're watching welcome and we'll have another show at 6 p.m. in this program they'll show 20 minutes of Pandora X which is a new production they're developing based on the Greek myth um, and we'll see where it takes us this program uh, we had them on on stage with La Mama and Culture Hub in April um, with their open rehearsal process. And so this is a continuation of that rehearsal process. Uh, Experiments in Digital Storytelling is also working with Dream Adoption Society, which will have another work of VR theater um, the last weekend of May with uh, Krzysztof Grabarczewski, who's, de who's developing and directing in Poland. Um, so great. Um, Yes, this is by La Mama and Culture Hub, and now we are welcoming Double Eye Studios and Kira Benzing. Thank you, Maddie. It is so nice to be here with all of you, gathered virtually and digitally across all of these spaces. And we are really excited to bring you something new today. Um, just as Maddie was explaining, we are testing things. We are running something new for you. Um, this is new work. Uh, we have not put this in front of an audience before, and we will be, you know, trying out some different ideas. We've been doing this parallel structure that we've been exploring for the last uh, bit of time, um, something that we premiered at the Venice Film Festival a production called Love Seat, where we ran in front of a live audience and simultaneously in virtual reality. And we would have done that, of course, in New York City with many of you watching. Um, live gathered in the La Mama downstairs space in partnership with Culture Hub. But instead, you are here with us live and the digital streams of Facebook and the social media realms. And then we also have some of you now joining us in our Greek chorus in virtual reality. We've built this world of Mount Olympus. And I want to take you um, back to do a little recap of what we did in the first round of experiments in digital storytelling with Culture Hub last month. We ran this experiment with live audiences and together we generated these, these word clouds and they were these kinds of collages from people's dreams and people's um, aspirations. And so this evolved in real time. And so I'm gonna play a little video from that and also the new collage that we generated based on photographs that many of you submitted to us online. 
And here goes this video now about these video collages. Stand by. So this was a word cloud that was generated by one of our audiences in April last month. And you can see how uh, people were generating all kinds of aspirations and goals. And the main one that came up was flying. So stay tuned for that. That was a superpower that they wished on. And this is a collage where we reached out on social media to gather collective images around these important themes. And these first set of images came from the theme of wisdom. So thank you to those of you who submitted these photos to us so we could bring this together. And this second theme that you're seeing came from the theme of love, which is yet another important theme. And people were taking walks, um, finding these images in nature, out in the real world right now and bringing these to us. Um, I know that some of these images also came from some really quiet times and moments people were reflecting on hikes. Um, this third image comes from Courage, and I want you digital audience to pay attention to this because you may be seeing some of these things um, later, going from a two-dimensional form into a three-dimensional form. And our final theme is hope. And this theme is particularly important for this production because this is what Pandora preserved in the box. And all of these other themes that you have seen were blessings that the gods had endowed her with. So keep your eyes peeled for these because they are offerings that you contributed from the digital world and they will be made as offerings to the gods in the virtual world. So that was uh, really one of our very first experiments. And our actors are getting ready backstage right now. They are taking their places in the, in the virtual land of Mount Olympus. Our Greek chorus is practicing something special. They've just been let through a portal and as that is happening right now, I'm going to take you into one other really neat tool that was painted by our tilt brush artist, Sarah Finn Huntley. There are all of these really interesting things that we can play with going from traditional theatrical formats, traditional cinematic formats. And at Double Eye, we're trying to combine all of those things into a kind of new inventive pipeline. And so we've been playing with the ability to sketch and draw in a three dimensional way. And Sarah Finn Huntley has brought this drawing of Pandora to life for us. So we're gonna play some of that. And then right from there, we're going to take you straight into the world of Mount Olympus virtually, where you will get to see what our actors have cooked up for you in this new myth that we are retelling. And so now we will take you into Tilt Brush and then straight into Mount Olympus. I will see you there. Do now. Look, I got a cube. You see these these cubes? Go ahead and bring those cubes back to the fire. There's four cubes, the right and left. Awesome. And let's go ahead and put them right here on the fire. These are the offerings, the magical offerings that we'll be making. Oops. That we'll be making to <laughs> to the gods. One of them represents Oops. wisdom. One represents 
hope one Alyssa, represents start bringing love. the cubes across. We that's it. Hope. We've gotten them. We it looks like we're missing one cube. Oh, it's over there. Let me go grab it. Do you want me to go grab it? I'll go get it. Oh, never mind. Start moving the cubes, Alyssa. Alyssa, move the cubes. Um, okay, no, no, come back, come back, Chris, come back. <laughs> Where are you? To move the cubes now. What? Bring back the cube, Chris. What? <laughs> He's gone right. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess this means we've started. So you all know what to do. You know what your lines are. Everybody grab a cube. Have, have we started? Mark, do you want us to move the cube to the stage? Okay. Alexa, move the cube to the stage. Oh, the... Oh. Okay, I lost start on, guys. Yeah. So what everybody is, grab a stage? cube. Say your lines. Say your lines. And let's go to the stage. Ready? Okay. Pandora. Hold, return. Long live Pandora. 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 Long live what are these murmurs? These wild rumors flying. Put your cube on the left one over there. Can it be? Has my chance come again? Answer me! I, the great Zeus, do so command. Hear the great oh, Zeus! Heed his, his command! At last. Pandora is dead. Long live Pandora. Pandora Make an offering Pandora. to the gods, and hope shall return. Hope shall return. Yes. At hope last. Pandora My dead. friends, hope, hope shall Pandora. be returned to us here, where it belongs, on Mount Olympus. And as for the mortals, my vengeance will finally be complete. <sighs> Down. Down mankind shall fall, down, down and punished one and all. That is my will, that is my vow. Come and gather round me now. Satyrs and nymphs of the forest and streams, muses of Greece who give glory through song, goddesses, gods, Awake from your dreams. Come hither. Come nigh and join the throng. Are you here? Yes, I feel you near. Lend me your ears and eyes, my friends and allies. For the time has come to strike again. To shatter with fear the hearts of all men. Oh, wow. I wanted that. Prometheus! Did you think my vengeance forgotten? That your act, misbegotten and exceedingly ambitious, would be lost on Mount Olympus? Do you not recall the destruction and danger, the thunder, the fearsome bolts of anger, which from this my very hand rained down upon the heads of man? A plague upon you for stealing fire. A plague on all men who embrace their desire. And by that beloved object shall no, know no. a fate most no, no, abject. Come back, come back. Come back. Living in fear, bereft, without a shred of hope left. Did you think my vengeance was forgotten? That the passage of time would efface it somehow? 
Nothing is forgotten. Yeah. Nothing is forgotten. Nothing is forgotten. Nothing is forgotten. Nothing is forgotten. My friends, my friends. Nothing is forgotten. Do you recall how we shaped the most beautiful maid of all? Like an immortal goddess in face, fashioned with all conceivable grace. Yea, with our talents we designed. A shameless nature, a curious mind, a singular spirit, strong and proud, became her well, the all-endowed Pandora. To wreak my vengeance, sharp and swift, I sent with you a poisoned gift, a vessel of inconceivable worth. Filled with the evils of the earth. Your fate to wed a mortal man, and by this, your lovely hand, to unleash destruction on the land, obedient to my command. That was my will. That was my vow. Yet, where are we now? Pandora, I have not forgotten. Nothing is forgotten. Forgotten. Nothing is forgotten. Nothing is forgotten. And full of wiles, with your seductive airs, your devious smiles. What? How? Where? Did I? <laughs> Hello, Tara. What are you doing? Nothing. Oh, you weren't mm -hmm. um, rhyming? <laughs> rhyming? <laughs> Moi, of course not. Really? Would I lie to you, my dear? Would you? Well, what about the time you said you had no idea why Hercules was so strong when you knew he was your son? Well, I what about the time you sent Hades to kidnap Persephone so I wouldn't realize she was one of your many conquests? I did not. <laughs> how I kept finding feathers in your hair even though you swore you weren't seeing Leda anymore. Now, honey, we've talked about this oh, many no, times. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't you now honey me. You're up to hmm. something. And if you're rhyming, it can mean it's no good. Don't be ridiculous. It's Pandora again, isn't it? Oh, no. The old one <laughs> has passed on, and her successor has inherited the Box of Hope. Am I right? How should I know if Pandora is alive or dead? Oh, you think I don't know about your dalliance with the original Pandora's granddaughter? <laughs> I can read you like a book. You hope to go back to the mortal world and seduce the latest in a long line of Pandoras, hoping she'll be, oh, just so enamored that she'll they, hand the box they, of hope have, over to you. <laughs> She's what, your great, 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 a thousand times great-granddaughter? You should be ashamed of yourself. Now, sweetling, you know the portal from Mount Olympus to Earth has been lost for ages. <laughs> I've been looking for it for five centuries. I mean, it's driving me crazy. Oh, boo-hoo. Yes, well, in any case, Pandora is the farthest thing from my mind. I don't care about her anymore. Perhaps that was the case before, and quite likely it was not. <laughs> the past is long forgot. Mm -hmm. Aha! Yep. What? So I what? Uh -huh. her. You rhymed. I knew it. You, you only do right that when the there's a this. new really Pandora, and you're hatching a room. dastardly plot to get the Box of Hope out of her hands and into your own clutches. Yes, uh, look, my dear. My dear, my dear, my dear. That is a silly presumption. Now, look, 
My friends and I are having a meeting, and you very rudely interrupted. Yes, Lauren? So, if you would. Ah, yes, your friends, your friends, right. Mere shadows of their former selves, I see. My friends and I, their power and might, like my own, remains undiminished. Right, right, right. Whatever you have to tell yourself. Ah, be gone, woman! Enough of your chatter! Oh, my dear, I fear you're as mad as a hatter. <laughs> Guys, how is a god supposed to think around here? Where was I? Ah, ah. Right. Pandora. Well, we all know the story. I sent her down to Earth with a box full of evils, and I told her, don't open the box. But she, unable to resist, lifted the lid and released plagues, etc., 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 all according to my plan. But what I didn't know was that that crafty creature, that sly little minx, had played on us the most devious of tricks. Only later did we discover the theft. That she had stolen all hope before she left. And... What? Do you say the fault was mine? That, that I should have uh, something, something divine? Oh, for Olympus's sake, you've gone and thrown me off my stride. How is I supposed to know hey, that Pandora believed me when I sent her down to Earth so with I've, what I've I said was a people, gift but after I for mankind the lines, and I that she thought here. that I'd accidentally forgotten to include hope. So she slipped it into the box and then trapped it in the box when she realized I'd actually sent her to Earth with a multitude of plagues and... Can you move people away from me? Just ah, right. 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 You're right. You're all right. That's all in the past. I must look to the future. And come up with a plan. A plan. Something new. Something to get the box back here where it belongs. But what? I mean, I've tried everything. You know, fear, seduction, pain, torture, chocolate. And she has resisted it all. And this last Pandora, I mean, she was the worst of all. Tough as... Wait. A uh, minute. The new Pandora is young. Innocent, untried. <gasps> I have a thought. <laughs> a strong woman passes. The new one, perforce, learns the ways of power in due course. But for now, weak as a babe in arms, how will she resist an old lady's charms? <sighs> oh. Hello! Hello, my dear. You don't know me, but I was a great friend of your grandmother's. Oh, God rest her soul. Do you need some help going through her things? Oh, no, no, no. You don't need to thank me. I'm just happy to help. Oh, well, if you insist, then a little keepsake would be nice. Hmm, perhaps... This little box to remember her by. <laughs> now, if I can just find that blasted portal and... Wait, what? What, what? What say you? Wait, the Temple of Artemis? Oh. But the Temple of Artemis, I have scoured it from top to bottom. There is no... No portal there, and... Wait, what? Oh. Did I look behind the throne? Did I look? Did I not? Again! All is forgot! Well, there is nothing for it. I will have to search again. I will return, my friend. <sighs> Let's all move just over here, you guys. Oh. A little bit away. Child princess, please come over here. My poor, deluded husband. <laughs> well, search and scour till your heart's content, for the portal has been in my power these past 500 years. 
Ah, uh, Hephaestus, my son, thank you for creating the means for me to enter the mortal world through my ends and my ends alone. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> this part always makes me feel so silly. <laughs> you do have a sense of humor, my son. <clears throat> From Mount Olympus to the mortal shore, I command you, appear, O portal door. One more. Ah, now, let's have done with this Pandora business once and for all. Okay, my gosh, you guys, you were awesome. Let's gather in a circle right here. Come and gather in a circle. So now, hi. <laughs> what we're going to do is we are going to express the, the, the audience members online are all expressing a wish for humanity. And we are all also going to express a wish for humanity. It can be something like what, um, what, uh, We ask Hello, everyone, everyone. What was the you so much for that they watching that wish experiment that they with us while we are trying all flying. kinds of things and so our today, actors are joining us from we are going to give that country gift to all of you and we are and all are going to learn how to many, fly many and explore different video Mount feeds. Olympus. So far we haven't broken, but that Come may still everybody. happen today. Um, Chris, are they so ready to something that's happening Laura in the virtual world are, right now are they ready that we to wanted to do with you in the real world and in the digital world is to have you express your wish for humanity. And so for those of you that might be watching through social media, whether that is uh, commenting with us on Twitter or commenting on Facebook, um, or for those of you who are just at home and might have tuned in and have a chance, or you're even coming to this later in time because this is a live event and maybe you've discovered this. Uh, and time of course is nonlinear. So this could be at any point. We would love for you to express your wish for humanity. That could be like one of the wishes and blessings that was given to Pandora in one of those themes like wisdom or courage or of course hope. But if you have another one that you want to share, feel free to express that with us. And we thought this would be a nice moment to do that. And that's something that's happening simultaneously right now in the virtual world. The audience and the Greek chorus are getting together and they are expressing their wish for humanity. So we thought that we would try to bring these worlds together in this in this moment of hope. So just take a moment to reflect now and share that. And we thank you all for being here and we're gonna move into a Q and A. Our actors are coming down from Mount Olympus. They're taking off their virtual gear and, and turning back into their human selves. And they're going to join us in a Q and A in a bit. And we're gonna start actually with um, our dear colleague, Chiara Spagnoli Gabardi, who's joining us. She's a professor of phenomenology in Milan and a visual artist. And she's going to be joining us in just a moment for the Q&A. There's one other thing that I just wanted to thank you for, digital audience, for those of you that 
were so amazing to be a part of our first experiment in April as in this series with Culture Hub, we asked you to express the superpower that you wanted and you asked for the ability to fly. And so that is a wish that has now been granted in virtual reality for the virtual audience. So just in a moment now, all of those virtual audience members are going to be given this gift and learn how to fly in our world of Mount Olympus. So thank you so much for, for sharing that with us so we could give that to them. So that is your gift that you have sent into the virtual world. So now we're going to welcome Chiara Spagnoli Gabardi to the stage, along with Mark Sternberg, my technical producer and tech lead on this production. Hello. Hello to Hello. you both. Hello <laughs> to the entire team. And congratulations for working miracles one after the next and for making dreams come true. So since Kira mentioned uh, the wish of flying, I would actually start right away with the two of you discussing how, uh, how that came about from a technical perspective and also the creative uh, uh, point of view. Uh, creative point of view is pretty simple. I mean, I, I think uh, regularly I, I champion the ability to fly in all virtual worlds. I mean, of course, it doesn't make sense for all narratives, but we're in a land of Greek mythology where people have magic powers. So, of course, they should fly. That feels, fits our narrative really well. So, you know, hats off to the digital audience that wanted that superpower. And uh, absolutely. And, and, you know, we've been very excited to be exploring this new release um, called Udon, which Mark can talk more about, um, that got implemented really quickly. And you know, a shout out to, to the VR chat founders, uh, Jesse and Graham, and our new colleague, Jason over there. They have been incredibly helpful and we are so excited to be able to implement flying um, in, a, you know, in about four weeks. And that's also you know, uh, a major salute to Mark for pulling that off because it's been a lot of development implementation to uh, to do that from where we were just in April, um, four weeks later to where we are right now. So Mark, do you want to? Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, as Kira mentioned, the movies for VR chat um, added a lot more freedom to what you can do in the in their software. Um, you know, it allow, a lot of the things that you see in the world right now are thanks to um, Udon specifically. Uh, especially the uh, flying, which you know, one of the users, Peptron One, uh, provided for the community, and we just implemented it in this world. Um, you know, it took a little bit of tweaking, but we got it there. And uh, you know, you can also see a lot of other great things that um, we're able to implement because so many people in the larger uh, VR and programming community have provided them. You know, you see some great uh, tilt brush art by uh, Sarah and Huntley. Um, that was implemented because, you know, Tiltbrush not only provided, um, you know, a great platform, but also the ability to bring it into Unity. Uh, it's a game engine some of you may have heard of that is sort of provides the basis for all of the R chat. Okay, well, thank you for that insight. I must say your team is also uh, very good in uh, unveiling the themes of our era. Uh, last time we saw Love Seed for the love dynamics of the contemporary world, and now Pandora is spot on. It's very serendipitous that it came out right now that we're living, obviously, a similar situation with the pandemic. I was also very impressed with your initiative of encouraging people to send photos uh, about themes such as wisdom, courage, love, and hope, and they were all related to nature. So, uh, Kira, how does that connect with the times we are living in, in terms of wanting to re-engage with the, the world outside, and also in seeing how our, our planet has benefited from us staying indoors? We're in such an amazing time in history, and I think that we're all going to look back at this moment and, and remember our strengths as as a human race and and the and hopefully the best of our abilities um and, and that we have discovered new things as a human race um there's something kind of uh regular to the the work that i do with Alyssa landry um our lead writer on this production who will join us in the second part of the q a Alyssa and i regularly um you know like to do these kinds of collective audience moments where people generate a piece of themselves and then we bring that into the work so as we could see we did these collective collages it started with these word clouds in the first experiment now this has turned into something more tangible that mark was actually able to 3d model 
and turn into something that we could bring into the virtual world. So we are, you know, taking these kind of collective elements and something that I see that I feel like is coming from the collective unconscious is this reconnection to nature. Everyone is taking these walks. People are getting very self-reflective and journaling. They're showing these, sharing these beautiful images of nature to their social media feeds or even in personal groups, things that really touch them. And I felt really touched by that. And I thought if we're bestowing the greatest of gifts to Pandora and therefore also to humanity, then what can we pull? And I thought, you know, even though we're living we're spending all of this time creating this new reality and performance in a virtual world. It would be beautiful to bring something from the natural world that we really cherish. So that felt like a, a special, something we could do as an offering to the gods. Yeah, and it was definitely really fun incorporating things from the real world. Um, you know, uh, we have the photos in there. We have some shadows that um, are sitting on the rocks uh, near the front of the stage. So there's a lot of fun things from the real world that we were able to bring into the virtual. And how were you inspired? And also, if you can tell us technically how you managed to create Mount Olympus in a virtual reality and give this uh, very spectacular and futuristic aspect to it. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot of 3D modeling work that goes into this. Um, we also did some tweaking on the 3D models of even the avatars themselves and almost made them completely new models, some of them. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, using a bevy of programs, you know, Photoshop, which most of you have probably heard of, Blender, which is a 3D modeling program similar to Maya. Um, and then, you know, again, Tiltbrush, some of the stuff is just made in Tiltbrush. And then, you know, all, this thing, all these things then go into Unity, which, you know, the name, as it, the name says, it unifies with everything. Um, so it's, it's a great program to work in and it gives you a lot of freedom and it allows us to create, you know, create great things like this, uh, a world that is, really supernatural and uh, certainly awesome to look at and fly around in for extended periods of time. Well, it's fantastic. And I was so fascinated by the use of shadows. And I have a question for Kira in those regards, because it somehow evoked to me the, uh, the allegory of the cave of Plato, where prisoners are chained to a cave and see nothing but shadows on the wall. And they start to believe that those shadows are the reality. And when one of the prisoners escapes and he goes back uh, to tell his fellow prisoners that what they were seeing was actually a deception of the real world, uh, they, they didn't believe him. They thought he was lying. So I was wondering, how does virtual reality and the worlds you create and the shadows somehow you create uh, portray this idea of human perception related to the environment you're navigating in? Yes, we are, you know, we are playing with these different levels of, uh, of reality and perception, like you're saying. And, and um, again, there's something kind of really magical, I think, about the human form and the human body and, and, you know, how can we bring those pieces into a virtual world? So, you know, we're trying to like mix the worlds in, in, in both directions and see where they meet. Um, and there's something that we wanted to do on a theatrical stage um, that dealt with shadows, which uh, we didn't get to do because we we can't be in the theater in New York right now. So we took this concept, um, you know, and, and that also came from a brainstorm session that we were having as a team. And I want to attribute some of that shadows concept to Chris Tapino, who's in the who's on our tech team and is teaching people how to fly in the virtual world right now. And uh, that, you know, this felt like another way that we could integrate them. So I thought if we're bringing these elements of the natural world in through images, what if we do that with people's shadows? So actually the shadows that, and I don't know that the, that the live stream audience has been able to see any of this, but certainly the virtual audience can, and they also have to pay attention to the detail. It's not in your face, it's kind of subtle and they're, you know, appearing on these rocks in the environment kind of like you're saying, going back to the cave, perhaps, you know, all the way back. Uh, we only go forward by remembering where we came from. Well, thank you. I believe we we can also expand the conversation with the rest of the team. So from uh, we can evolve more shadows from this beautiful <laughs> reality you have created. Definitely. Oh. So we will be joined by the, uh, our actors. Jen and Jonathan, my writer Alyssa, and I think we're saying goodbye to Mark, for, just for the time being. Thank you. Yep. Until the next uh, time. Uh, uh, I'll see you guys in VR flying around. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, um, I guess we could just say to anyone who's watching, you know, leave, uh, if you have any technical questions for us, feel free to leave them in the comments and we'll do our best to get back to those. Absolutely, please do. Sounds good. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. See you later. <laughs> See you in the virtual world. Definitely. <laughs>
I can't hear Jen. Um, well, I'll, I'll jump in really quick then. Um, so it, it, it's Kiara's uh, referencing to uh, Love Seat, the show that Jen and I worked on this past summer with Double I at uh, Venice Biennale. And um, and that one, it's two people who are just meeting each other and um, do not meet Q. And so this, if, you know, for me. I'm sorry, I'm not over here. <laughs> We're having some for live sundries, each other's thoughts before. Uh, yeah, they, they just they know each other inside and out. Um, and, uh, you know, what's interesting, of course, about performing in VR is that the way that you read the other person is so much about uh, about their gesture and how they're moving since you don't have the same sort of intricacy of face. And, um, you know, the avatars kind of give you so much of that, uh, that, that sense in terms of how the other person's thinking. Uh, is Jen with us? If not, I would like to I, I about know. directing the act. Okay, wonderful. I can hear you. I can hear you. And I can hear you. I can hear you. Are you all hearing Jen? <laughs> No. Unfortunately, I'm not. So I would, uh, in the meantime, I would like to know from our director's perspective how it is to uh, direct actors in VR. And if you think, since you have a very extensive background also in uh, live theatre, stage theatre, in cinema, if you think that actors nowadays should develop their acting skills and their craft, through VR, if that's an additional thing that they should add to their CV. That would be cool. I think if we had more uh, more performers to be uh, joining us in our virtual world, world, it would give more people for Jen and Jonathan to be playing with. Um, and they are definitely ahead of the curve. They have gained a certain technical understanding that makes it really easy for them to work with. And uh, of course, they're already very smart people, but you know, they've, they've been learning an additional skill set about how to teleport and how to fly and how to make those choices as their avatars with intention. And I think that that's something that's really um, special to see as a kind of evolution in their development as performers. And it would be great to see other performers try these things on. I mean, this might not be for everyone. I don't know that every performer wants to work in a virtual world and wants to you know, wear a motion capture suit. I mean, what we were doing in Venice was a, was a low-fi version of motion capture. Um, which they also got really accustomed to and understanding their gear and and also, you know, remembering their human body and kind of the balance between those things. But there's so much here that we're all learning and discovering together. And I mean, you know, we were tweaking, blocking, and there's so much further we can go. And, you know, we just, uh, we just really got a number of things working to be able to present this so far. And, you know, we just want to keep going further. And I think that Jonathan and Jen, and you know, will be evolving even more as these VR actors. Um, but yeah, I think it could be exciting to see other other performers try and learn some of these skills. Um, Jonathan, how, I mean, how do you feel as you are, you know, maybe in your kind of evolution, even Kara, if you, I'm like pivot a question to Jonathan. You know, like I'm curious how you feel as you've developed from from working on Love Seat to now. Yeah. I think it's um, it, it constantly. I'm I'm constantly learning, and it does feel like I'm learning a a new skill that's very related to performing on stage, and also to an extent performing on camera. And um, uh, there are some a lot of things that I learned in Love Seat that I'm able to apply in this show. And then uh, because the show is different. Um, there, are, there are a lot of new skills. Um, today, I discovered what audience interaction is like in a new way, um, because you know, because yes, we're having just like some technical improvisations, which makes it always exciting. And we're back. We also have Jen, so maybe Jen can tell us. Uh, hello again. So maybe you can tell us about your uh, craft as an actor and how it has evolved through virtual reality and how you can consider it 
in the in, in the world of your colleagues? Yeah, I we were. Uh, I I think being that we're where we're at right now um, in the world where large gatherings aren't available to us, um, gathering in these giant deep crowded spaces is obviously something that we can do. And you had mentioned like um, it would probably be a good idea if actors could um, uh, be introduced and the equipment and the um, the aid of people like Kira and her team to help us learn and understand this world and Kira and other VR artists help making live VR theater so we can actually have some more to work. Um, we just aren't going to be able probably to join large spaces for a while and like you said um, it might be a good idea for actors to have the ability and the means to learn the VR space to be able to act in just so we simply will will be able to work. Um, and it is a it is a skill set that is very technical and very troubleshooting. Um, and it's something I think it for me at least it takes um, a kind of patience and a and a, a curiosity to understand the technical elements and what people are trying to do that is Theater, that is film, that is um, just straight up computers on computers on computers and what that layering does um, and being able to have some type of understanding of how virtual reality works so that we can then have a space to work and perform and um, eventually share with others, which is, you know, for me, the whole point <laughs> of performing. Um, Yes, definitely. So I, you know, it, it, it requires, you know, people would have, actors would have to, you know, be able to have access to a headset and um, access to a team like Double Eye who can, can, can help us. But, you know, we're at the very beginning here. So it's like there's, I don't think that there's any sort of limits as to what we can do or we can learn and we can provide for other performers. Well, definitely, it's it's very meaningful, and uh, we are living in the future. We always think about these things as so far ahead, but these things are happening as uh, also the technical team has demonstrated by granting the wish of uh, last month of seeing characters fly. And obviously, this wouldn't be possible without the work of you performers and the wonderful writing of, uh, um, of people like Alyssa. And I wanted to know from Alyssa, how do you create um, characters that manage to weld the mythical with the contemporary? Because I was very impressed by Hera, who obviously represents the, the mythical image, but she also seems to be a very sassy wife, so someone relatable nowadays. Um, I was just assuming that the, the gods have always meddled with humankind. So I was just assuming, going on the idea that even though they weren't able to meddle anymore because of this portal that's been gone for so long, that they were still able to have some sort of window onto humanity and that without even realizing it, their behavior and their patterns of speech would be influenced by current mortals. Um, I think that we're planning, Kira and I are planning on having this take place actually about 10 or 20 years in the future. Uh, so we were trying to bring the, when Zeus is speaking in verse, that's sort of a throwback to his great grandiloquent way of speaking when he was an all powerful Zeus. And then they fall into a more contemporary language because in spite of themselves, they have been influenced by humans throughout the centuries and the millennia that they have lived. So I, I wanted to give that mix and also the fact that they are basically in quarantine, kind of the way we are, is they are driving each other a little bit crazy and everyone else has disappeared. All the other gods have been forgotten by mortal man, except for Zeus and Hera. Um, and they're just the two of them in that virtual, virtual Mount Olympus, kind of driving each other crazy. Uh, so that's that was sort of the concept of, of the scene, this first opening scene. Well, it's, it's very powerful, and I love uh, the, the rhyme. I wish we could bring it back in today's world, also, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, doing the groceries and uh, just traveling again when we will be able to do that. 
after, um, after we find a, a solution to this uh, situation we're living in. And um, yes, as I was saying at the very beginning, all the, the topics from the Double Eye Studio seem so timely. And I, this time experiencing this performance, I felt like Kira was almost our Pandora, unveiling all the, the evils that have happened in this world, but giving us hope thanks to your collective efforts. And um, I wanted to know uh, from you, Akira, how, uh, how do, because I saw an evolution in your work through the years, how uh, do you also intertwine the theme of gender politics? Because obviously here we, we see the, the husband and wife and Pandora, this sort of love triangle. And of course, uh, I know it must resonate strongly with you considering you're a female direct navigating this new medium and there aren't uh, as many female directors in virtual reality. So how do you try to channel also this topic in a balanced and appropriate uh, and not preachy way within your storytelling that obviously is universal and embraces other themes as well? I think we're at you know, such, a, such an interesting place in history where we are acknowledging that we have not had as many stories told by women and, and about women. Um, and that the, that's something also that felt really important to Alyssa and I, that we have a female protagonist who we haven't seen yet. <laughs> We're keeping her a secret right now. Um, but obviously, you know that the show will be very much about her and she is a strong, complex woman. Um, she's a smart woman. And, you know, that's, it's been interesting to be brainstorming about her. And as Alyssa's been digging through research and sharing all these like tidbits, you know, she'll come across these great little Greek moments and we're sort of going through Zeus's <laughs> conquest and just going like, oh my gosh, this is <laughs> luck with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so really what Hera has had to put up with over all these years is uh, really, really fascinating. And to get to see her kind of flex her, her muscles as a goddess um, and the stories that she has lived through that are with us, you know, that have been written down that, you know, all these really fun stories of, of Hera. Um, and of course, you know, there are variations on these things that were told by different, uh, told by different writers. And, and something that we've also learned is, you know, Pandora really was given a jar. Uh, maybe Alyssa wants to speak to that for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is one of the things that, that really fascinated us about Pandora is that basically her story was rewritten by men. And at the beginning, she had this huge jar and in the jar were all the good things that uh, were meant to be given to mankind. She was sort of a, a, a nature, a mother goddess who accompanied souls when they died into the heavens. And she would send them with these jars full of all, all goods. And somehow in that first uh, official writing down of her myth way back when, um, it was transformed into a jar of evils that she opened. Uh, and then even later on, it was transformed actually by a Christian priest during a sermon into a small box that she opened. And so all of a sudden it became this small portable object and a woman brought all of the evils to the earth, uh, when actually originally a woman brought all that was good to the earth. So that's that's one of the themes that we'd like to explore in this is, is what do you do when your story has been re rewritten by other people? How do you take control of that story and bring it back to the essence of what you want your story to be? Um, so we hope, which is our second theme, that we'll be able to, to make that clear and have people think about how can they take control of their stories? How can they build hope into their lives and create their own stories that they're living? Yes, indeed. And I think you said something very important about how she was being accused because there's always this human tendency of trying to fix the blame, which is the big theme of Pandora as well. And we're also experiencing it nowadays and trying to a shame a, a, a population or someone specific to the horrors that we're living in. So uh, I must, I'm, I'm very grateful, I believe also on behalf of all the audience that has been following you for to bringing to us all, all of these uh, very timely topics. And all, of course, thank you to Culture Hub and uh, the Mamas for, for hosting us and giving us a space uh, in this uh, digital, a forced digital lockdown. 
So thank you very much for the great conversation. It's always inspirational to chat with you. And I'll hand over to the Culture Hub team. Uh, actually, I think they are handing it back uh, and they've asked me to close out. So, you know, I'll close this, this conversation. Thank you, Chiara, for joining us all the way from Milan and Italy. And, you know, again, our hearts from the U.S. go out to all of you in Italy and, and we're all going through this together. And we will keep building a new world. And maybe some of you will come fly with us. And we will be back at 6 p.m. Eastern time. So for those of you on the West Coast who are maybe just waking up from a long brunch, you can join us. Um, for those of you in Italy or Europe that might be night owls, you can join us really late. And for those of you in New York, uh, hopefully we will catch you uh, at the right time. And we look forward to seeing you all back here. Um, and you can be catching his live stream um, on the Culture Hub Facebook page, on the Culture Hub Watch page, on the Double I Facebook page. I know, I believe some people have mentioned there have been a couple of glitches. I've been getting some messages um, and hopefully that will all be resolved and we'll be back here ever stronger with new ideas and new innovations. Okay. Ciao, guys. Bye. Ciao. Bye. <laughs>